Hello, Belinda Woolrich here and welcome. Thank you for attending this online workshop wherever you are and whatever time it is in the world. It is great to have you here online and we appreciate your time and effort to be on board. Our best wishes to you, your family and community and friends. A bit more about me. I'm Belinda Woolrich. I'm a downsizing expert after project managing hundreds of downsizers and helping people through this transformation over the last decade. I'm also an author of the book, Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize. I am also the Director of Learning at rightsizeyourhome.com.au, where I have written and designed several courses to help people in their downsize and get in control of this journey. We have Rich on board, CEO and founder of Property Buyer, a licensed real estate buyer's agency, or agent he is, property investor himself and professional economist with over 20 years experience in the property industry. So Rich and his team are located in Sydney, but uh, actually do work far and wide. And I'll ask you a little bit about that. Help your clients buy, find, appraise and negotiate the ideal property for their needs. So Rich, 20 years in buyer's agency is quite some time. You've obviously had a fair bit of practice. Um, and it's lovely to be talking to you today. I've known Rich for possibly half of that time. We were trying to work that out yesterday. Probably even longer. Um, and of course, not, you, yeah. it could be, it could be more. Yes. All right. So, what will we learn today? I've got there's six major slides here. So, um, the topic headings are: Why would I even think about right sizing right now? Uh, also, I've been keeping an eye out on real estate, and there is nowhere to go. Is an assumption. Everything so, seems so expensive, so I'm going to talk about that. Uh, what does a great buyer's agent do? I'll, I've never worked with one before. Um, very common in this demographic, especially because there often hasn't been a real estate transaction for a good 10 to even 50 years. So quite normal. Um, how and when does the property market recover from COVID? That's an interesting one. And uh, then, Rich, uh, our top tips and any further questions. So why would I think about right sizing right now? Um, I certainly have a strong feeling about this that right sizing for me is about the individual. So market aside, make sure you, you are at the center of the process. And Rich, I know as we've um, experienced that you always put the client at the center of the process. So would you take it from here? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think I think thinking about right sizing and doing it early rather than later. I mean, I think of my own uh, mum and dad. You know, they they moved out of Sydney up to the Gold Coast and downsized. And uh, and even from the, when dad was at the Gold Coast after my mum died and passed away, uh, he he downsized again. And it was my dad loved a lot of books and he had a lot of stuff. And I think it's important to sort of start as early as you can. It doesn't mean you sacrifice your lifestyle. In fact, it can be a new chapter of life. It can be, you know, a new opportunity to, uh, to really do it. So I think, you know, thinking about the process, because it does take time to adopt to change and, you know, to, to really get into the mindset of, of wanting to move mm -hmm. to a new location. There's a lot of unknowns um, and you've got to ask a lot of questions, you know, how far and wide would you be prepared to move? What size dwelling? Who's going to be your neighbour? You know, there's a lot of questions like that, Belinda, that you've got to ask. Um, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but certainly right now in the market, there's a really good opportunity to buy. You know, we're, we're, we're in a buyer's market now. It's not completely a buyer's market, but the market has softened it. Don't, we don't have that sort of frenetic pace um, of prices yeah. getting away from everyone. It's, COVID has 19 has put a very strong uh, pressure on the brakes for the market. And, you know, we've seen the market come back 5 to 10% in some areas. Um, so we've had a lot of the price falls that I think we're going to have already. So I think, you know, um, even in some areas, we're seeing prices go above uh, the reserve price, which is quite unusual, even in a soft market. But I think the thing to remember is that you are selling your property and buying in the same market. And we know there's a lot of active buyers out there, Linda. Um, you know, I'll give you one example. I was due to go and look at four properties last Saturday. And I had my little short list there to go out and look. And when I get to Saturday morning, two of them have sold on the Friday night, pre-auction. So you know, the, wow. the smart buyers are there snapping up the deals and they weren't bargains, that's, that's for sure. They were good, they were good solid prices in, in prime areas. So, you know, a lot of downsides will typically have a fairly substantial um, amount of equity, usually paid off their home. So they've got a fair bit of equity there and it's important to, to capitalise on that and maximise that so you can then buy 
an appropriate property that's going to be right right sized for your for your next stage in life. Mm. Interesting times, and I also uh, w I was speaking with a real estate agent a couple of webinars ago, and they were saying too that right now they can see strength in the economy. We've got support from banks, we've got support from JobKeeper, and those sorts of things. So, mm. it's almost the devil, you know. Yeah, it's not. There's a lot of doom and gloom. I mean, there's a guy called Harry Dent from America, or Robert Kiyosaki, or um, what's his name? There's a few other you know, doom and gloom economists out there. Um, but our market in Australia, it's not completely immune from the, from the world economy, but it is unique. And, you know, you've got to understand the dynamics of what drives the Australian property market. And typically, we have always been in a position of undersupply of property. So prices have always tracked up. You know, we need to build um, around 230,000 dwellings a year. Uh, but typically, building hasn't been keeping pace with that. So we always had a shortage of supply. You know, and the, the five year boom between 2012 to 2017, we saw prices rapidly escalate uh, during that period. And we did, you know, meet a lot of that shortfall in property, but we're gonna go through another period now where we're gonna build up a deficit again while building levels are way down on their normal rate. So um, yeah, it's just important to remember there's still very strong drivers for, for the property market and it's a very resilient. It's unlike the share market, which can drop 50%. You know, I think we've seen around, as I say, 5%, 10% falls. I don't think you're going to see prices drop yes. too much more, uh, possibly in some areas, maybe another five. Uh, but even then, it's going to be very area specific. It's, there's no one property market, Belinda. I think people need to understand, you know, we don't talk about the property yes. market as one entity. You know, selling a property in Vaucluse or Bondi or Manly or Palm um, Beach is very different to selling a property in Penrith or Glenbrook. You know, there's very different markets out there. So it's important to understand what's driving the local factors. Mm. Different markets, definitely. What we do have that is consistent is the people listening to this webinar and podcast will be family homeowners. So that is something that's always desirable. There's Absolutely. always growing families. Mm -hmm. So interesting. We're not talking about properties that may or may not sell or there is purely investment or something like that. They're, they're genuine family homes, which are which always seem to have their own ecosystem in, in our areas. All right, topic number two. I've been keeping an eye out on real estate and there is nowhere to go. Now, this is my probably my favourite question for you, Rich, because if it's not on realestateanddomain.com, you know where it is. Yeah, so look, real estate and domain for me is the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole hidden property market that people don't know about out there. Um, and what is an off-market property? Well, the definition of an off-market property is it's not advertised to the general public. So you won't know about it. You won't know it's for sale unless you have the right connections and the right context to find that. Now, the way in which I find and my team find properties off-market is two ways, or several ways. One is we have a very, very extensive agent database. We have over 4,000 agents that we have been in contact with, regularly update, and we can email them your property brief to find an off-market opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, the other way is we get people or vendors approaching us directly looking to sell their home. Now, we don't take a fee for selling, but we could possibly match a property up with a buyer on our list and save sales commission for you. So that's another way that we can help you. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but finding those off-market properties, is it's so good because you're not in competition with a lot of other buyers. It gives you a little bit more time um, and it just opens up the door to a world of opportunity that you, you never thought have. I mean, Matt and my team took out a client last Saturday. Um, he had eight properties to show them. Three of them were off market. You know, so that's a very high proportion that we can find uh, in yes. that sort of space. So you know, it's a great tactic you can use and tap into that network through our, our buyers agents. And this is the, the exciting part about it because this demographic really doesn't particularly want to go and attend auctions and troll mm -hmm. through the internet and go out and see places and meet real estate agents. So you know the properties, you know what they're worth. Um, you've got great connections so you can find them before other people do. And this is where the, the hidden value is that I think that our demographic doesn't know about. And it makes so much sense for a downsizer to enlist a buyer's agent. Um, hence why you wrote in my book, Rich, because that's, that's right. Um, I believe in, believe in the service. Mm. All right. And leading on for that, everything seems so expensive. Uh, but are they paying too much? They don't know. How can you so help them? The way in which we can help, Linda, in this is, is when we find the right property uh, for the downsizer, the right sizer, um, we do a very detailed appraisal of that property. And the way we do that is we look at comparable sales. We look at what's recently transacted in the last one to three months. So we do the same job, probably even more detailed than a registered valuer will do. We actually have a valuer on my staff 
And we are very accurate with our appraisals. And we take between two to two and a half hours to appraise the value of one property. Um, most people who are doing their research would have no idea uh, about how to estimate the true value of property. And you know, the agents, when they list a property for sale, they have to write on what's called an agency agreement, the estimated selling price. And there's a range, around about a 10% range. So it might be 1.5 to 1.65. But the thing is, they will always quote 1.5 to the general public. They'll quote the lower end of that range as a bait price to try and entice buyers to come in. And that vendor, there's no way that that vendor may sell at 1.5. Um, and it's probably, I'm probably underquoted. So there's still that issue of underquoting in, in the general domain. So what we do for our clients that engage us, we educate them first up. We give them a, a detailed report on the market and help them understand the dynamics of the market and over and just protect them. Essentially, that's what we do. We provide a level of protection to make sure they don't pay more than they need to. We're really tough negotiators, right? We try to save our clients and I'll talk about that later. But, you know, there are some, mm. some really good opportunities out there and property prices, if you haven't transacted for 10 to 20 or 30 years, the market has moved dramatically. You know, property prices in Sydney have typically doubled every 10 to 11 years. Um, you know, and our current median house price is around 1.1 million. But you know, go back to 2011, our median house price was 560,000. So you can just see that you know, prices do keep moving over time, and there's a lot of strong drivers for that. Yep, definitely. And hence, um, hence the saving of your fee, essentially. So by someone going and overpaying on a property. Mm. Um, we've certainly paid for you several times so actually while we're on that can I ask how that works with your fee Does yeah sure so our fees we work on a fixed fee structure Belinda uh, most agents to sell your home will charge you around two percent as a, a general figure to sell your home so we work on a fixed fee basis and the approximate equivalent range is between 1.5 to two percent um, once you get up to around a $2 million purchase, our fee is around 1.5%. So we charge a retainer fee of between $3,000 to $5,000 up front to start the searching process. We find the property, we appraise it, negotiate it. I'll explain a bit more of the process. And then we charge a final fee upon success, successfully buying the property. But the thing in this market, Belinda, we can save our clients anywhere from three to ten times our fee. So effectively, you get our service almost for nothing, you know. So um, without the headache, <laughs> without the headache and the stress and the, and the headaches, I tell you, because uh, I mean, I've, I've saved some clients. Just quickly give you a couple of examples, if you like, now yeah, because please, we're talking yes. about it. Um, in the last three months, I've transacted several properties. I bought a, a lovely little two-bedroom unit in Manly uh, that we appraised for one point three two. Now I got that for just under one point two million, so I saved the client one hundred and twenty thousand. Now, our fee was 20,000, but they've saved 120. Fantastic. I bought another, another property in Kalani Heights. Uh, it was worth 2.4. Uh, we'd missed out on this with this client on a couple of options before that. Um, and then I then with the COVID discount, the COVID crisis, I was able to save them $200,000. You know, so mm -hmm. our fee again was around the $28,000 mark, but I saved them $200,000. They were just over the moon. They got a massive house. They said they could never have found this without me. Wow. My board is in uh, Pennant Hills recently for a lovely family with a couple of young children. Um, it was appraised at 1.55 and I bought that house for 1.4 million. So I saved them $150,000 in that transaction. So it just gives you a little, a little sort of test. Um, and it's, it's also not just about the savings. It's, it's obviously, Belinda, it's very important that the client gets the right property. You know, um, when, when you're in a, a moving or a fast or a hot market where prices are rising, you, a lot of buyers were outbidding each other by five or $10,000 and the prices were just going crazy. So mm. it's also important to know when to stop and when to find an alternative opportunity. Mm, absolutely. And that's where if you've got someone's hand doing this process, um, we don't, they don't make mistakes. Are you an empty nester looking to downsize from the family home? Are you finding your home no longer serves the purpose you bought it for? Do you need to declutter and don't know where to begin? Like many thousands of seniors, you are not alone. Transitioning from the family home can feel incredibly overwhelming and stir up mixed emotions from the past. I have written a comprehensive and insightful guide on how to go about finding a more appropriate size home and how to get there. 
My book, Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress-Free Downsize, leaves no stone unturned. You will find all aspects of downsizing covered by me and expert contributors in a quest to answer all of your questions and help you overcome the fear and challenges that so often present. You can order the book at rightsizeyourhome.com.au and get in control of that right sizing journey. All right, number four, what does a great buyer's agent do? Well, here's your chance. (laughs) I think we've probably had a bit of an explanation um, as we've gone through. And also, um, Rich, as I said before, you contributed in my book. So there's a big section in there um, about how this all works. But um, yeah, if you could give us your your story here. No problem. I'll just explain. Look, when when a client engages our services to find a property, we go through a seven-step process. And the first one is understanding your needs. So we look at your requirements, your desirable and your essential uh, requirements. So it might be a three bedroom townhouse, close to the shops, walk to bus, walk to shops, for example. So we want to get a really that's clear- exactly, That's exactly <laughs> our demographic, I think. There you go. So it's downsizing, <laughs> low maintenance, low land, exactly. I know exactly what they're after. Just try to get inside the client's head, understand exactly what they're after. So we create what's called the buyer's brief. Now, once we've got that, we know it's realistic, we know it's achievable. Um, they pay their engagement fee, then we start accessing property. So we look at everything that's online, on market, as well as off market. As I said before, we'll email that to our agent database to find all those off market properties. And that's called the short listing process. So we go and inspect them before we show the client the lender. So we spend all of our time and spin our wheels looking at properties that are what we call rubbish properties. And then we pick out the gems, the good ones, or we think the ones that might fit the criteria. We arrange a, a convenient time. We take the client to have a look. Um, get their feedback. Now, if they like one of them and they say, yeah, but I, Rich, I, I think I could live in that one. That's a really good one. Then we do that detailed appraisal report I've just talked about before, where we spend over two and a half hours doing comparable sales research. And we give them a written report on the value of that property. Then if they're happy to move forward with an offer, then we do the negotiation on behalf of the client. And this is a really powerful step, Belinda, where you've got a professional negotiator between you and the selling agent. Because the selling agent, their alliance or allegiance is solely with the vendor, whereas my allegiance as a buyer's agent is with you as the buyer. So we are strictly independent and, and loyal buyer's agents. So we step in, we negotiate uh, the price, um, we liaise with the solicitor to get the contract reviewed, negotiate the terms, and then we get the property exchanged. That's quite an exciting time putting pen to paper and exchanging and securing a property. Um, And then we also attend to what's called the pre-settlement inspection. So just before the property is settled, normally a 42-day or a six-week time period, we'll also just check that nothing's been taken from the property, nothing missing, and it's all going forward. So that process, um, how long does it take? I mean, you've said they're 30 to 60 days. That's on average, depending on what what is available on the market. But we do have, on on average, a six-month agreement. So there's no rush to buy the right property. We work with everyone at the right pace to, to help them find it. And we just essentially act as your sounding board and and give you that confidence to move forward Mm. on the right opportunity. Fantastic. Okay. So, Rich, um, you've got a crystal ball there. What are your thoughts around this current market, the property market? When is it going to recover? Yeah, I get asked this question every day. So I just wrote back to you and I said, Tuesday the 13th of July at 12 p.m., it's going to recover. But no. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Look, what I see happening in the market at the moment, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty uh, and doubt. We call it FUD. FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt, a lot of funds around. And the market is, yeah. you're going to see the media, you know, with, with a lot of doom and gloom headlines. I was on the Channel 7 News the other week being interviewed about the Commonwealth Bank's prediction of a 30% drop. But what they did is quote the worst case scenario. Now, if we go through two years, that's eight quarters of negative recession, negative growth, the property market will drop 30%. Um, that's still a pretty resilient property market, I've got to say, with eight quarters of negative growth. That's extremely unlikely. I believe we're going to have two quarters of negative growth. So this current April to June and then July to September quarters will both be negative. And then we're going to come out in December quite strongly in the rebound. So I think the spring market will definitely see a lot more active buyers in the market. And we always advise our clients to be counter-cyclical, to try and get ahead of the curve. If you can buy at the time when there's kind of more panic and more uncertainty, you'll be able to get a deeper discount generally. So um, that's what we're advising. And we do know there's a lot of buyers out there. I speak to agents every day and they talk about their buyer lists as well and who's buying what. 
and these properties are still trading. So what I would suggest you do if you are serious about right sizing and, and looking to make a move, is get the wheels in motion now so you can get your property prepped for spring when there's a lot more buyers around because that will be a good opportunity to also maximise your selling price during that spring selling season. Mm. And maybe a little bit before is my thoughts too. So um, I guess the first thing is whenever it's right for you, that's the first mm. thing. And um, potentially we, we, we actually know what's happening in the market now. We've got results. You've been out last Saturday, all those sorts of things. So um, 12 months time, we don't actually know. So... Well, I think, I think the other thing, there's a, another economist called Christopher Joy, Linda, that writes in the Financial Review, and he wrote a really great article the other day about why Australian houses prices won't fall very much at all. Mm. He's actually predicting in the next 12 months, property prices will resume their climb again. Um, he is saying that, you know, because of the underlying demand, because of the government stimulus package, because of all the measures and safety nets we have in place, yes. and a lot of households have a fairly decent balance sheet. So a lot of households have a healthy amount of equity in their loans. And we don't have high interest rates. We're in a low interest rate environment. And because of that, we're not gonna see widespread delinquencies in, in people having forced selling. The banks will do everything they can to support people, to delay their payments. So people are, you know, some people are saying, oh, there's gonna be blood on the street, lots of forced, I don't believe that's gonna be the case. Yes. Yeah. I think we're gonna see a more, once we get back to work, the lock, we come out of lockdown completely, you're going to see consumer confidence start to return and you won't see the panic toilet paper buying again. You know? yeah. um, and we're going to start to see a more normalised market and particularly in spring, there's more optimism. Um, so that's where I see the market hitting in the next six to 12 months. Mm, I'm with you. And we certainly coped as, a, as an economy better than expected mm. than as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a fantastic view of um, what you can do and also a little bit about the market on both ends of this um, property exchange. Um, the top tips, Rich, I'm thinking number one is think outside the box. Now, to me, that means thinking about um, if, you, if you've got an eye on a particular suburb, don't discount next door. Um, or if you've got um, a traditional view on how to buy real estate, have a research of what a, what a buyer's agent can do and get some help especially if you haven't don't do this every week several times like you do so that's how that's what that means to me how about you for thinking outside the box too yeah i think it can also mean like some people might think they're moving from a house to a townhouse um but they could think about moving to a duplex um mm -hmm. they could actually move to a very much smaller house on a block of land it might have been subdivided so um or some people might i'll never live in an apartment but look you know there's some really great large apartments out there. You know, there's some apartments that are 150, 200 Great ones. internal mm. and they have wonderful views, very solid walls, very soundproof. Um, and you've got your own community around you. So I guess some people have a bit of a bias as to what style of property is going to suit them. I would say, look, get out there and have a look and ask, ask as many questions as you can. And don't always believe what the agent says. You know, the agents are generally pretty good, but test and measure what you're hearing and get an independent expert that's not got a vested interest in what they're advising you about a particular property. Um, and as you said, Belinda, yeah, think about suburbs, think about location, a little bit uh, outside the box would be good. There's a buyer's wish list um, in our book that you gave to us, um, Rich. So that's definitely something when you're getting stuck into the right size your home book, um, have a look at that list. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I always ask my clients to put aside location at this point and what is it that you actually need around you? Is it one bedroom? Is it two? Is it three? Um, do you need a northeast aspect? All of those sorts of things. So there's, there's requirements of a property and let someone look after finding it. So as long as you're getting what you want at the time where you want it, I think that's important. Um, number two was no time like the present. I think that applies every day of the week, any year, because it's actually, for me, it's all about the downsides of themselves. Um, your thoughts on that one, Rich? Yeah, I mean, we always put off to tomorrow what we you know, can't do today. Um, but I always think, you know, we're not going to live forever. Um, as I said in the beginning, it's, it's a chance to have a new chapter in, in life, um, to have a, a dishwasher that opens properly and a cupboard that doesn't fall off when you open the hinges, you know, like it's a chance to start fresh and why not? You know, you guys deserve it. You know, you've lived well and it's a good chance to start a start afresh and enjoy some things that, you know, you might've been putting up with your all, all your life. I have a, a change is as good as a holiday. So yeah, I think don't delay it if you, if you can avoid it.
absolutely. Um, present well always. I think that's, um, that's not, that's for your property, obviously, not yourself. Um, but uh, make sure that you take advantage of it. If you're going to put your property on the market to actually make sure, give it your best shot, give it its best shot and make sure we, we have that changeover price that we've been discussing. That's the all important thing. So whatever happens in the market, if you present well and you can maximise what you're getting out of your property, you'll do well uh, moving forward. I'd just say to that point, Belinda, um, we generally have about seven seconds to make a good impression whether you're meeting someone for the first time or whether a buyer is coming to look at your property, you've got seven seconds to make a good impression. And it's that emotional impression that you make on the, on the buyer will have a huge impact. I mean, Belinda, you're brilliant and absolutely fantastic at styling homes and knowing what cushions go where, what throw rugs go there, what little knickknacks look good on the tables. That's, that's your, that's your specialty. And I've seen the work you do and it's fantastic. So I recommend that, your, your clients really take advantage of that service and present and style the property to create that emotional attachment. Great, great. Um, and number four, trust the specialists. Well, <laughs> well I think, Belinda, on that one, yeah. it's, it's important to I, not just take people at their word, but just you can research people online, look at their credentials. I mean, in my industry, look at the length of time that the buyer's agent's been operating. You know, we've been going 20 years and we've won 34 awards for excellence. So, it's pretty obvious, you know, our credentials. Um, but sort of ask, ask the hard questions. What, what's, how are they getting paid? What's the incentive? And, and just make sure they've got your best interest at heart. You know, we have a, a thing called fiduciary duty. It's a big word, but fiduciary duty means yeah. that put the client first. And that's my mantra. And that's how I've succeeded in business for 20 years. So, and you do the same, Belinda, I believe. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Rich, I've really enjoyed talking to you about uh, this. As I said at the start, it's a, where do I go to? If it's not on realestate.com, you think it's too hard, speak to someone that can find those sorts of things. So um, that's fantastic. Thank you very much for answering the questions coming up. And obviously lots um, retrospectively to have a look at. Our next one is about affording the right size. So another unknown, um, what, what, how much does it all cost? Many of these questions that we've discussed today um, Rich has discussed in my book, Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nurses Guide to Address Free Downsize. So you can have a read of that. Um, and of course, if you need Rich, contact us um, and we can put you in touch and enjoy um, the service that you can offer. That would be fantastic. And they could, obviously our clients can talk to you, Rich. It doesn't cost anything. We can ask questions. Absolutely. So whatever questions you have. Happy um, to have a conversation. conversation any day of the week, Belinda. No problem. Fantastic. Excellent. All right, a couple of learning opportunities for you to upgrade and find out more about what we have to offer. You can, of course, buy the ebook, um, which is $9.99. The Right Size Your Home, The Empty Nester's Guide to a Stress Free Downsize. It's a much deeper dive of this um, getting your right size right. Um, and I'm sure you will enjoy reading about that. Also, our online courses, I recommend that you start with the first course, it's $49, Right Size Your Home, course number one, Shifting Your Mindset. So head to rightsizeyourhome.com.au and follow the training courses um, and select the, the one that you're after there. And I hope you love it as much as I did writing it. Next up, how can I afford to right size, as we said, another one talking about is how furniture hire can help you get that sale so how to present the property um, so of course who's selling it is not going to be who's buying it and we need to cut through to them um, and then we've got a series of um, how to declutter tips and techniques so lots of great stuff to talk about i just want to thank you and close on these words once you believe in yourself understand you're doing the right thing the project the downsizing project becomes purely a logistical process Thank you again, Rich. It's been terrific to have you. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you. Belinda Woolrich makes no representation and gives no warranty as to the accuracy of the information and does not accept any responsibility for any errors or inaccuracies in or omissions from the information contained herein, whether negligent or otherwise, and shall not be liable for any loss or damage, howsoever arising as a result of any person acting or refraining from acting in reliance on any information contained herein. No listener or workshop attendee shall rely solely on the information contained in this as it does not purport to be comprehensive to render specific advice. This disclaimer does not purport to exclude any warranties implied by law which may not be lawfully excluded. 
This workshop, which includes any resources supplied, is only for the use of the intended recipients and is confidential and or privileged. Belinda Woolrich shall not be liable for any errors, emissions, viruses, loss and or damage arising from using, opening or transmitting this workshop.